This is Professor Pelton. This is part six of chapter three, section seven. Now look in the cases where we have to have restrictions because we don't have the one-to-one -one and the horizontal line test is not going to pass um, necessarily. Um, so if it's one-to-one, -one, it's fine. You just The domain is the range and the range is the domain going back and forth between inverse and function, okay? Because obviously, if you're just going in a circle, basically. Domain of f is domain, uh, domain of inverse and the range, basically are equivalent all the way across, right? Which is what you're looking at here. Okay. All right, so let's do an example here. So if the domain of the inverse function Oh, determine the domain and the range of the inverse function if the domain is 1 to 0 and the range is negative infinity to negative 2 of the original. All right, so the original and then we'll write the inverse, right? We'll just call them something. We'll call this one f and we'll call this one f inverse, okay? I don't know why that came out so messy. Not quite sure, sure there. Let's try again. Okay. All right. So domain range. And then domain range. Okay, so what was given to us is the original, which is 1 to infinity, and the range is negative infinity to negative 2. So as a result, the domain here is negative infinity to negative 2, and the range here is 1 to infinity, right? So you just have to switch them. And that's a very messy infinity. All right, pause the video, try the student problem for yourself. Okay, for the student problem, we have, we'll call the original f, I guess. It doesn't really matter the name. So that is the original. And then the inverse will be f inverse. Okay, so in both cases, we have a domain and a range. We have a domain. And we have a range. Okay, so what was given to us here is the inverse function's domain is 0 to infinity. And the inverse's range is 3 to infinity. So therefore, the domain of the original is 3 to infinity. And the range is 0 to infinity. Okay, so understanding that basic fact, we can now go into domain restrictions, because if there's a restriction on one, there's a restriction on the other as an as outcome of this. Okay, so let's look at this in the same way, but with actual real functions this time. So we have the original f of x, domain, and range. And we have the inverse, f inverse of x, inverse, domain, and range. Okay, so let's look at the original one first. So the original one, this is a simple squared. There is no number I can't plug into there. I can plug in negative numbers, positive numbers, and zeros. There's not, There's no problem because there's no even roots. There's no denominators. And there's no trigonometry or any other domain restrictions we've ever had of. So I would write negative infinity to infinity, but I also have to look at the inverse. So if I go to the inverse, that's an even root. I do have a restriction, right? I can't do radicals of negatives, right? So x plus 1 must be greater than 0. It can be 0, right? Because if I solve for this, I can plug in negative 1. Negative 1 is fine for this x value. Because if I plug in negative 1, I get 0, right? So my inputs have to be, uh, actually, it could be equal to negative 1, couldn't it? Because I could be 0. So I need to be negative 1 to infinity,
right? So that tells me my range here, negative one to infinity, okay? So as far as my domain of the original or range of the inverse, I can look at either one. To be, I usually look at the one that has the restriction. So I'm gonna look at this one because since it has the restriction. So the lowest number I can plug into here is negative one, right? which gives me zero. So I cannot get a negative outcome. The highest number I can get is a zero. So I can get a zero or I can get higher. I cannot get a negative outcome because I cannot plug in negative numbers. The lowest number I can plug in is negative one. So that means that gives me my domain here of zero to infinity. So normally I can plug in anything I want into here, anything I want. But in order to have an inverse, I need to do a domain restriction to actually make that true because that x squared is this graphically, right? Which is not, that's not a very good graph at all. I don't know why it skipped like that. Because an x squared is a quadratic, it's a parabola. It does not pass the horizontal line test and is not one to one. So therefore, normally you would not have an inverse. But if you restrict the domain, you do have an inverse. All right, pause the video, try the student problem for yourself. Okay, so before we do this one, let's uh, graph it first. So we can understand what we're looking at. If it ever loads here, it's a little slow. So one over x squared. So I have a ratio of one over x squared. Okay, so clearly does not pass the horizontal line test, is not one to one. So therefore typically would not have an inverse function. So we need a restriction to be able to make this to work. Okay, and keeping in mind that x can't be zero in the original, right? Because you plug in zero, you're dividing by zero, that's a problem. Otherwise it can be positive or negative. Okay. So we're going to write f of x, which is the original, domain, and range. So we go over to here. We have the inverse function, which normally wouldn't exist. Oop. But, so an inverse. Up by doing domain restrictions, we can make it exist. So domain and range. Okay, so what can I not plug into here? Well, first off, I cannot plug in negatives. Can't do a square root of negative, right? Get an imaginary number. And I also can't plug in zero, correct? So basically, x has to be greater than zero. It cannot be zero and it cannot be negative, right? So that means I have zero to infinity as my in, as my possible inputs there. So if I go over to the range here, that'd be zero to infinity. Okay. All right. So I can either look at the domain of the original or the range of the inverse to get what it's supposed to be. All right. Well, if I look at this, my only restriction here is x cannot be zero. I can be any positive or negative number though, right? So normally you would think the domain would be negative infinity to zero, union zero to infinity, right? That's what you would think if you looked at the original function. But if I look at the inverse, right? Okay. I can only plug in, this can only be a positive outcome, right? That's it. So it's one divided by a positive number, right? So I can only get positive answers. Can I actually get zero? Well, no, because I can't plug zero into there. I can get something really close to zero, right? Um, and I cannot get a negative answer, so that's what I get there. So in fact, I get zero to infinity here. This is not valid, okay? So what I'm doing is a domain restriction to actually make it line up with the inverse function, okay? Because normally, 
If you look at the graph of this, as we saw, it does not pass the horizontal line test. It's not one-to-one. -one. So normally it does not have an inverse function. But by limiting the domain or doing a domain restriction by getting rid of part of the domain, right? Now I do have an inverse function, okay? All right, that's the end of this last part.